For our first lesson in our photography class, we're going to be talking about line and filling the frame. But first, let's define what exactly the word photography means. The word photography, in a way, has two parts, photo and graphy. The prefix photo refers to light, like in the word photon. The suffix graphy is referring to something written or drawn, such as stenography or calligraphy. So when we put these two together, photo meaning light and graphy being something written or drawn, we get photography, the art of painting with light. Now when we say painting with light, we don't necessarily mean something like this, but rather we're talking specifically about how the light comes through the lens of a camera and is captured, thus creating a piece of art. So. If photography is painting with light, and painting with light is a form of a visual art, something we can see, and art is something that impacts the viewer, then how can we paint with light to capture something that is visually impacting? Or maybe the most basic question we're saying is, why can some people see something of interest, yet I can somehow miss it? Maybe this has happened to you before. You're at the beach, and you've brought along your camera. And while you're there, you notice a scene that might be interesting, so you take a picture of it. Meanwhile, your friend has also come along and brought their camera. They also see something interesting and take a picture. Later on, you compare the pictures, and you think, why is their picture so much more appealing to me? Why couldn't I have seen that? Most likely, your friend has a good grasp of elements of design, the parts of design that we humans tend to like to see. One of those elements is the use of line. Another is shape. Another element is form. Artists will use texture and pattern. And finally, color. And so these are the elements that an artist will use in order to create something of interest. Another skill to have to make impacting pictures is composition. The idea of where are we going to place the things that we see through the viewfinder and lens of our camera. One technique of composition is filling the frame. Another is the rule of thirds and contrast, as well as a frame within a frame. And lastly, which way should my picture be? Horizontal? Vertical? Should I have it cropped square? And so, these techniques are ways that you can compose items within the frame of a camera to create impacting art. And probably the most important element of all in taking good pictures is the use of light. Throughout this class, we'll focus on all these elements of design and techniques of composition. But for today, we'll focus on one of each. Whether you know it or not, the use of line impacts your pictures. Lines can be long, short, thick, and thin. But the interesting thing about lines is that they do a lot more than look a certain way, like thick or thin or long or short. Lines actually can be used to cause your viewer to do something, such as causing the viewer to have emotion. Take a look at these three lines. One person might look at these lines and prefer the top line because it looks cute, while another person may look at these lines and prefer the bottom line because it looks strong, whereas the top line to them looks weak. Thin lines often produce in us a feeling of fragileness or softness, whereas thick lines evoke a feeling of boldness and strength. Often, the most common use of line in nature that we see are wavy or curvy lines. And so it makes sense that when we see curvy or wavy lines, we tend to feel that things are natural and things are in order. Things feel fluid and together when we see wavy and curvy lines. On the opposite end of the spectrum, though, are jagged lines. Jagged lines make us feel like things are out of place, like things are broken. There is anxiety in jagged lines. Diagonal lines, on the other hand, give us a sense of action of motion. Diagonal lines 
similarly to wavy and curved lines, give us this idea of movement and motion. So, though lines can evoke emotion, they can also make the viewer do something else. In fact, lines can lead your viewer's eyes. Take a look at this image. The photographer here uses the lines of the car's lights at night to draw our eyes from the left of the screen to the right. Our eyes tend to want to follow lines, especially if there are many lines going in the same direction. This picture would be excellent if there was something at the end of the bench which our eyes are drawn to. I went outside the other day and took this picture. Now, this picture is dividing my interest. I don't know whether I should look at the line or the orange cone. So I took the orange cone and put it next to the line. Now, my eyes and the viewer's eyes are typically drawn to that orange cone not only because it's contrasting color, but also because that line leads us to it. Later, I saw a tree. I noticed that when I pointed the camera up, I had a leading line, the trunk of the tree. My eye follows it from the bottom up into the branches. Another component of capturing pictures with impact is to fill your frame. When you fill your frame, you cut out all the other things that the eyes may be distracted toward. For instance, I was outside and I saw these diagonal lines on this AC machine. I snapped this picture. There's a lot around this image that distracts me away from those diagonal lines. So I walked closer and filled my frame with those lines and snapped this picture, which is okay. But as I walked closer and filled my frame more with those diagonal lines, I came up with an image that I felt like was even more interesting. Can you see the difference between things that can distract the eye away from what you want the viewer to see versus filling the frame with only the component you want the viewer to look at. By the way, on a quick side note, I turned my camera lens down into the AC unit itself when I saw these lines and textures, filled the frame with them and snapped this picture, which is just to say that most often there is more than one image that you can capture with any one spot. While I was outside, I also noticed the shadows that these benches were making, and I snapped this picture. But there are so many things to look at in this picture. Whether the viewer sees those shadows or not, I don't know. But if I fill my frame with that pattern, those lines that I noticed on the ground, then I know that the viewer is only seeing that one thing that I felt like was most interesting. I turned around from those benches and saw these stairs. I thought, wow! The shadow of those stairs and the stairs themselves make some really neat diagonal lines. But look around, there's so many things to be distracted from those two items. So I repositioned myself, found a good diagonal line composition and snapped this picture. Now the only thing the viewer can look at is this element of design that I wanted them to look at. There's not much else to be distracted by. While walking around, I saw this sign on a fence, and I loved its texture. But the problem was, when snapping this picture, there's so much more to look at than just that element. So I walked closer. I filled my frame a little more and snapped this picture. And I thought, eh, that's okay. But upon moving closer and filling my frame with that texture, I made sure that the viewer is seeing that element of design that I thought was most interesting. By the way, do you notice those leading lines of the chain link fence off to the right? Those lines will, more than likely, draw the viewer's eye right to that spot of red. Out in the back field, there was a tree that I thought had some interesting berries on it. Can you even see the berries in that tree? There's so much to see and so much contrasting light. So I stepped forward, shoved my lens right into those berries, and snapped this picture. On my way back to my office, I noticed these stairs, and I thought, wow, those metal things on the stairs have a really neat pattern, something that would make an interesting image. But instead of sticking with a picture of the stairs, I filled my frame with that pattern. Lastly, on the ground next to my office in the grass were these weeds, which, though they're weeds, made for beautiful flowers. Now I took a picture of them. Do they look beautiful? I don't know, I can barely see them, and plus there's so much that my eye is searching for. 
so I moved closer and filled my frame. But there's still too much for my eyes to look at. I don't really know what I'm supposed to look at here. So I moved closer even more and filled my frame. And while I was there, I thought, I'll try a different perspective, laid on the ground and shot up as well. Again, there is more than one image to be taken of any one thing. And speaking of finding more than one picture for every one item and place, when I was looking at this sign and its texture, I noticed some lines that I thought made an interesting connection. So I stepped up and filled my frame and captured this, which I found pleasing to my eyes. So what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that there are elements of design and that one of those elements is the use of line and that line can actually draw out emotion. We also learned that lines can cause the viewer to look at certain things if we use them to lead the eye. And lastly, we learned an element of composition which was to fill the frame so that our viewer is not distracted by anything other than the things we see as most interesting. But more important than any of this is that you have fun. So grab your camera, get outside, capture some lines, fill your frame, but enjoy your time making impacting pictures.